Do this right hand is BAM! And they said it was on his face for a while too. He landed on his face. As a young yeah. as a young kid, so hold on, I think he had eight skull fractures in his is. there he is. He looks so Sage posted so picture was up. fresh out of surgery. I had eight fractures and nine hour of intense operation. Feeling blessed, are you? Of course. I guess bless you didn't die. Feeling blessed that I didn't die, and my face is only in 17 pieces and not 70. For the amazing care and all the support from one championship. No, no, fuck one championship on this stage. What? Who's his manager? Who is his man? Why? Why is this? Is this not obvious? Did we? Did anyone think that this was a good idea? I fucking told you guys. That, why would he do this to? Why would they do this to Sage? Well, you can give them a grappler. He's not a grappler. That's not his background. Well, he can wrestle. He's not a wrestler. No, he likes to stand with guys, and he's not at the level to stand with a world-class striker like Cosmo. Why would we do this? And they have small gloves on. What the fuck are you guys thinking? And now your young American prospect that left the UFC to pursue a long career in the one championship, his face is in 17 different places. Not only you get knocked out, but it's a life-changing knockout. So now his face is fractured. He's going to be out at least a year and change, probably a year and a half. Then when he comes back, confidence is shot. Think he wants to stand with guys now. They have to figure things out. You fuck the trajectory of his career. And I hate to say this because one championship has been good to us and they've been good to Mighty Mouse and it's obviously on the fighter. It's, it's up to him to navigate his way through the rankings of fighting. But you fucked him one championship. It was a complete mistake for Sage Northcutt to sign one championship. His entire career has this changed the trajectory of this kid's career. Oh, he's young and figure out. Not Listen, man, he, he's been in some fights. He's in the UFC. They threw him some, some dogs. He's been stood up. This isn't helping. Tossing him these guys at this day and age and the, the, where he's at in his career with his experience. This this only distracts and takes him away from the ultimate goal of being a complete mixed martial artist. Now he's out for probably a year and a half. So, uh, what a, what, there was an, wasn't there one more big fight booking that we're missing, Harrington? Well, 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 listen, listen. I mean, nothing. No, When I say nothing, I mean nothing is bigger in this world than the press conference between... The Russian hammer, Artem Lobov, <laughs> Paul Malinaji Lewis. I mean, come on, this is hot off the press. Yeah, well, I mean, look, it was fun. It was at the very, it's entertaining no matter what way you want to slice it. Yeah, Paul Malinaji comes off like a fucking uh, whatever. I mean, I, he comes off a little bit like a meathead. Um, but it was kind of fun to watch. It, you kind of want to watch these guys go into it. It seems passionate. My, my problem with Paul Malinaji is it doesn't. It doesn't seem legitimate. He doesn't seem like he actually hates Artem Lobov. He seems like he's just wanting to sort of walk the walk and, and sort of like, you know, sound like a tough guy. But where does the hatred for Artem Lobov come from? Well, 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 first and foremost, I got to say this. And maybe you're right, Lewis, and you probably are. You know, maybe it's a little manufactured. Perhaps we can, I know it's audio only, but is it possible that at this point on the audio only on YouTube, we can insert an image of a fedora hat. I'm going to tell you this right now. You're not feeling poorly because of all the bullshit that he's saying, the things that he's doing. And don't get me started on spitting on him. Any motherfucker that shows up wearing a hat like that deserves to die. It's as simple as that. I'm sorry. You look like an absolute tit, okay? He looks like a, a, a villain out of the Dick Tracy movie. You know what I mean? He might as well have had a, a pinstripe suit on, that big stupid gangster hat. Oh my God. He did not look good. I'm sorry. Maybe I don't get it. Maybe I'm not, you know, Italian from Brooklyn or whatever the fuck you say, Polly. You know, maybe that's their thing. But I'm telling you, you look like a twat. And any man that runs around, I don't care if you're at the beach. I don't care if you're uh, whatever pastime you are taking part in. If you go out wearing a fedora, you are a cock. It's plain and simple. <laughs> <laughs> what about uh, like an old black man at church? Pass. He gets it. He gets He's allowed. It. He's okay. It's a cultural thing. It's an age thing. It's 2019. Okay. If you wear a pair of modern shoes, you don't get to wear a fedora. Okay. If yeah. you're turning up to a press conference wearing a fedora, oh, God. 
polymer analogy. Let me spit in your face. Jesus Christ. Yeah, he's spitting his face, um, which, yeah, I mean, look, low blow. Uh, Very. Yeah. But look, we're it's it's making me excited to watch it. We you know the, this is not we are talking about. It. This is what they did, right? We can talk all the shit all we want. They did a good job because now the number one MMA podcast in the world highlights used by actual UFC ESPN promos. Uh, they actually have us speaking about this, and they're getting the press that they want on it. And people right now are clicking on the YouTube video. They're hearing about his gay hat and the fact that he spit in his face in this you know crazy press conference. They're going to go and watch that now. Um, and in a weird way, you know, bare knuckle boxing is. I have a little bit of respect for how they just sort of came out of nowhere, and they're making some noise. They're making some noise in the fight world. Nah, well, you know, let's not get into that. We've spoke about this before. But listen, you're, you're right. They are attracting headlines. Uh, Artem Lobov, you know, I mean, listen, he, he didn't do too well in the UFC. And I'm, I, I'm, I'm trying to be respectful. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I'm not, you know, but he struggled. That's a fact. Um, and now... In a straight-up boxing match, he's going against a former world champion like Paulie Malinagi. Now, he has been out for a while. So, you know, let's see what version of Malinagi shows up. But this is very personal. And when it's this personal, you do push yourself in the training room, you know, and, and you give it your all. So, uh, it's an interesting fight. I mean, listen, on paper, um, you got, you got to think Malinagi is going to run right through him. But going back to what you said... You're right. You're right. I mean, it's funny because a lot of people talk about how in mixed martial arts, they want to move away from the entertainment factor. And they're saying, oh, it's great. Now that Connor's not around so much, we're moving away from that. And now it's becoming more about the sport and more about respect and all the rest of it. But scandal and behavior like that, it sells. It's as simple as that. Now, maybe in its purest form, it would be nice if people went up and they shook their hand and, and they bow and they fight their hearts out and then they hug each other and embrace. Yeah, yeah, that is cool. It's really cool. But I'd rather watch a fight with two people absolutely hate each other. They're spitting in each other's faces beforehand because I'm like, shit, get the popcorn. This yeah. is going to be good. So you're right, Lewis. Fair play to them. Yeah, I can't, I can't hate on it. And, you know, look, Artem didn't have a, an unbelievable career in the UFC, uh, but he's an entertaining fighter. Paul Malinagi, you know, we were talking about Nate Diaz being out for a while and how much this is going to affect him. And Paul Malinagi, he hasn't fought since March 2017, hasn't had a win since July of 2016. So it's a you know, similar thing, two years since he's fought, more than two years since he's fought, and going on three years since he's had a win. Um, Artem Lobov, he's just fought bare knuckle boxing. He's been an active UFC fighter, been fighting for high High level fights for a very very long time right now i've been very active so that might be a, a major factor here as well so the experience with just boxing uh goes to paul malinagi but you have artem lobov who's also been super super active and you know i i i, I kind of want to see it for the first time i'm actually interested in watching a bare knuckle boxing fight so i have to say good for them for actually doing a good job promoting it because there's a little bit of interest here um, I just, as as my son's getting older, he's six years old now, like, I'm getting into watching fighting with him now. I couldn't watch that with him. It's guaranteed that you're going to see these nasty fucking cuts on their, you know, their faces. It's a really brutal, brutal sport. So uh, that's sort of the downside of that sport that I see, where it's like the mixed martial arts has almost become like... It's almost become a family sport. It's crazy to say, dude. Where it started from, where it's at now, I don't think it's weird to have a seven-year-old kid at a mixed martial arts event or, or watching a mixed martial arts event, especially if the, you know their family's involved in the sport in one way or another. Um, but bare knuckle boxing is a little bit too brutal for kids to be watching. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because I had uh, Lucas in the octagon um, in 2015 <laughs> when I fought Talis Lightis. Callum came into the ring after a bunch of my fights, after I won my fights, and he was there live. Uh, so, yeah, I, and you're right. It is bizarre to think that UFC now has become a family sport, certainly in the U.S. For example, out here in South Africa, uh, I'm here and I'm, you know, I'm in the makeup room, in the wardrobe, trying things on and doing makeup tests and whatnot. And they know I'm a fighter. They, they hear about that before I come. And they, they've got so many questions because... It's it's not a big deal out here. Although you know, some people don't do know who I am. It's it's kind of weird walking down the street in South Africa and somebody beeps the horn and they're like, "Hey, Bisping," you're like, "I'm in fucking South Africa." It's crazy, but that's the reach of the sport. But still, what the point I'm making is, it's still 
unknown in some territories now because I was explaining to somebody today in the US it's massive and you're right it has kind of become um, like a family sport and that's because when it went on to Fox Sports that was the that was the deal changer the game changer part of me because you would go from sitting there watching you know um, basketball baseball whatever the sport was then that would finish and boom on came the fights so you got legions of new fans and now of course it's got one up and it's on ESPN. So now it's definitely, you know, up there with the big boys in terms of sports entertainment. So it is incredible. Um, you're right, but bare knuckle boxing has come out of nowhere. And I feel like eventually it will uh, disappear into obscurity again. That's just my bold prediction for this episode. But uh, I can't see this being sustained. I am intrigued, though, to know what the pain Paul in Malinagi. You know, he had a long, lengthy, uh, successful boxing career. He retired with a record of 36 and 8. Um, most of those losses came towards the end of his career. I'm just looking at his Wikipedia page. Uh, but still, you know, I mean, I would one would think that he would command uh, a healthy purse. Now, of course, from what I hear about bare knuckle boxing is that they get a decent cut of the pay-per-view and that's the only way they're attracting some of these fighters. And, you know, for a guy like Malinagi and Artem, no wonder they're doing that. Like when I fought GSP, that was partly because partly part of the reason why I was going out there and I was trying to antagonize him so much. A, because he's just an easy target and I was having a great time. Maybe that's just because I'm a, you know, a bit of an asshole deep down. But B, because I'm trying to sell and hype the fight. So you got to think what Artem and Malinagi are doing, it's, it's all to help sell more pay-per-views. Yeah, but, but, but uh, I saw something about Dos Anjos tweeted because I think... I'm only basing this on what I saw of Dos Anjos' Twitter feed. Some, Connor tweeted something about Dos Anjos saying that he broke his foot. And then Connor started talking shit. So then Dos Anjos came back and he was like, oh, I'm not surprised when you talk shit about a fellow fighter's injury or something like that. Is that correct? Did you see that? No, I didn't see it. I'm, I'm looking for it no. now. Yeah. Uh, let's see. That broken foot is my working tool. Make fun as a fellow fighter shows the person you are. Before sleep, you want. Oh, he really is writing his own tweets. He needs a fucking intern. Yeah, Jesus no, Christ. No, sure. I love Dos Anjos. I will blow smoke all day long. But please, please stay off Twitter when you try to insult people. Or just like get somebody. Get someone from the gym. Get the person in Starbucks to tweet it for you. Perillo. Anybody. Just say, here, talk some shit back for me because he's just such a good guy as well. He really is. If you have not already, Hit that subscribe button with its notification bell and leave a comment in the comment box below of what you thought of the video and tune in for more on MMA News Outlet.